Hi, I'm Ann Edwards and welcome to GE13 The Showdown. Now, MCA, unlike DAP, does not take voter support as automatic. Now, these were the words uttered by MCA President Tato Sri Dr. Chua Soilek not too long ago. And since then, the party has been working towards gaining the support from every race, mainly the Malays, Chinese, Indians and also others. But the crux of the showdown remains. The question remains is what is MCA's chances in GE13 right next to me in our studio I have pleasure to welcome YB Dato Chua Tiyong who is MP Member of Parliament for LABIS. Welcome Dato. Good uh, morning to everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Alright, we are into our last mile. Yes. Yeah? YB, anytime Parliament Correct. will be dissolved, Correct. what is MCA's chances? Um, I think in this uh, coming 13th general elections um, it will be fiercely contested by all parties mm. um, from 2008 until now it's really five years so in terms of the voters sentiment the voters decision they say one night in politics is a long time right. so after five years we believe with what MCA has done mm -hmm. together with what Barisan National has proven in this five years track record together with the uh, leadership of the Prime Minister mm -hmm. and our President of MCA, I believe that the chances of MCA will be much better mm -hmm. in this coming election. Mm -hmm. Despite all that has been said and also there are criticisms, of course, the ongoing one yes. that MCA may lose quite, uh, you know, slightly yes. <laughs> right here in the polls. Um, so. In fact, the, there will always be what you call assumptions, there will always be surveys, there will always be a lot of what you call estimates that how many seats we can get. Mm -hmm. But one must understand that unless the ballot box is open, the votes are counted, the fight is not over. That's number one. Number two, if you look at all the programs that has been done by MCA lately, uh, we have been receiving uh, good attendance. So, mm -hmm. But of course, we always say that attendance doesn't mean votes for either both sides. That's right. What is important is that, number one, we have a proven track record in terms of service. And most of our candidates, or in fact most of our member of parliament, are not what you call touch and go uh, politicians. Most of them, when they get elected, even though they do work in parliament, they also perform in terms of ensuring infrastructure, providing service to the people, and this is part and parcel for a developing country. Yeah. So if you look at MCA in terms of the chances, as a good example, is the indication of the number of members coming in and joining to MCA. Mm -hmm. A lot of people saying that after 2008, a lot of party members will leave in droves. Can you there give us be some a numbers? Lot of, of course, there will be a lot of people jumping ship, they say. Right. But if you look properly, mm -hmm. the number of members of parliaments, the number of state assemblymen that has been jumping, it's not from MCA, mm -hmm. it's all from Pakatan Raya. Mm -hmm. And if in terms of members, we have attracted 80,000 new members. Okay. We have uh, left, um, people that have left the party are in less than 1,000. Mm. So to me, it's, it's okay. You have always people leaving and joining, but it doesn't indicate that there is no one keen or no one believing in MCA mm -hmm. because the new members would have to believe in MCA to join MCA. But then again, there's always the question of uh, urban seats, yes. yeah, which is more yes. popular among opposition DAP. Um, in terms of the urban seats now, what has happened was that in 2008, there were a lot of factors that were not really addressed at all. And we believe with the new leadership now, for instance, public transport, there is now a way to look at it, how to integrate the public transport, how to have an MRT so that we can relieve and increase the ridership. In terms of crime, it is an issue. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is the government take note and admits that it's an issue whereby they are still trying to reduce and resolve. And also corruption. Yes, and that corruption is, a is also issue. a major issue. Mm. Whereby if you look currently, at least in terms of the standing, we have not deteriorated further. We have improved from 60 to 54. But what is also important in the whole aspect is that when you look at all these factors, one of the key important role that we need to look at is that BN in these five years, despite a lot of countries facing a lot of economic downturn, huge unemployment, in our country, we still have a proper steady growth. We have a vision how to build up the country, how to implement policies to create jobs, to attract investment. And when a lot of countries are reducing subsidies, we are adding subsidies. But what we are doing is adding subsidies according 
to what the government can afford. Okay, we'll come back for more from Wavida Tuchwa yeah. right here in our studio on GE13, the showdown, and also for some dirt that's happening out there. Stay with us. And thanks for staying with us. We've been talking to YB Dato Chua Tiong, also known as Chua Junior. Yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of terms for it. <laughs> okay, um, you gave a lot of very good feedback. In fact, okay. yeah, put things in the light right here okay. uh, in our studio and also in terms of uh, some of the issues yes. yeah, that's being faced by yeah. political parties okay. in this country. And we're looking at another issue also. One of the major issues mm -hmm. is inflation and it yeah. has been released, these figures uh, recently, between yes. 2 to 3 percent. So okay. inflation is also going up. Yeah. And this uh, does not actually reflect well on Barisa National as well. Um, number one, in every country now, the whole world, name me a country which is not facing inflationary pressure as much as Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Most countries are facing this problem. In fact, if you compare to the region, we are much better off because of the subsidies that are being implemented. Mm -hmm. But what is more important is that when you talk about inflation, wow, the key component is affordable housing which is one of the key aspects now that is being, what you say, the public's expectation mm -hmm. is the government building affordable homes. But if you look at the policies of the Pakatan Rakyat, they will ensure that things continue to be more expensive, houses continue to be more expensive. Why? Because, for example, in Selangor, they have what you call a land conversion surcharge, which is implemented when Pakatan Rakyat came in. And this has resulted in a huge housing price increase because when there's a cost developer increase they will pass it to the consumer right. and under the Pakatan Rakyat in Selangor what happens is the whole sand business is monopolized by the company so in Selangor one lorry of sand is 1000 to 1005 right in Johor is 300 to 500 okay so that definitely adds a huge cost Okay. And Penang doesn't have any affordable home, <laughs> as, as Auditor General has mentioned. Slango is uh, one of your favourite topics. Um, oh. It's not favourite <laughs> topics. It's one of the states that they have governed. Okay. And uh, Kedah and Kelantan is much worse off. Okay. Kedah has a debt of $3 billion now. Oh. So I don't think we have to talk much about Kedah and Kelantan. Okay, and also since you mentioned Johor, yeah. of course uh, there's, there's dirt also happening there. DAP seems to be making an onslaught yeah. in uh, Johor with Lim Kit Siang making an appearance over yes. there. Yeah. Okay. How do you look at this? Um, there is a few ways to look at this uh, Lim Kit Siang coming mm -hmm. to Johor. Uh, before Lim Kit Siang announced uh, that he will be standing in Johor, we have the episode where Dr. Bu is openly mm. having a feud with uh, the PKR chief, Chai Jui Ming. And it's an open secret that both wants to stand in Geylang Pata. Mm. So by Lim Kit Siang coming to Geylang Pata, it may be to, number one, placate the animosity between both parties. So when he stands, of course the PKR members will not say, why are you standing here? Because he is the supreme leader for the AP. Mm. And the other factor, if you look, is two, they have no confidence in the DAP leaders of Johor to ensure that they will gain better seats. Number three, it doesn't mean that if Lin Kit Siang comes in, it's a show win. Because his track record doesn't indicate that he's 100% or is every battle he wins. There are also speculations that Hugh, also known as Superman, yeah. is contesting against you. The comedian Superman, I would say. <laughs> yes. Which for somehow reason ties with the movie Superman mm -hmm. because the Superman in the movie is afraid of kryptonite. Hugh is afraid of pass, <laughs> which is green colour. Okay. I welcome Hugh to stand if he wants to stand, but based on what I've understood, he has actually clarified that he is not standing. So who stands? I mean anyone can stand as long as you're a Malaysian citizen. 
So in MCA, in BN Johor, we welcome any political party, any DAP members to come in and contest in Johor. Hmm. I mean, we will never prevent them. Do I take it that you will still be at lobbies? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> there is uh, no indication at this moment oh, okay. uh, where we would be standing. Uh -huh. But of course, um, I have to thank the voters for giving me these five years, for giving me a chance to be a member of parliament there. Mm -hmm. And I do hope that I get to continue this journey together with them again. There is a perception, and this is of course very known, yeah. is that a majority or majority of Chinese in yes. this country lend their support to Pakatan Rakyat. What is your view on this? Um, I think there is a perception created by Pakatan Rakyat also that saying that, okay, Chinese voters, no problem, they will always vote us. Mm. It's been taken like an automatic. And that's the reason why when DAP did a scenario simulation analysis of how many seats they can win, they have already put in that Chinese support is 65%. The only thing that they have varied is probably Malay and Indian support, they have fixed it at 50 And this is done by Liu Chintong. So this shows that they have a slight arrogance in saying that the Chinese have no more choice. They only have DAP. It doesn't work that way. To me, five years is a long period. In 2008, there were a lot of factors that contributed to what the results was. And in this current general election, I'm quite positive still. We'll take a short break, yeah. very short break. We'll come back for more. It's okay. getting hot right here on set with uh, YB Datuk Chua Tiong. Stay with us. And we're back right here on GE13, The Showdown. We've been talking to YB Dato Chua Tiong, who is MP, Member of Parliament for Labis, and also uh, known as Chua Jr. Um, how do you, I mean, uh, just a bit of a light moment here, yeah. but um, you are, of course, uh, the son to MCA Correct. President, Dato Sri Dato Chua Soilek, and um, a lot of people also lend their support to him. So um, what about you? I mean, how do you um, I think in handle terms all of this? politics uh, currently at this moment. You have Lin Guan Ning, which is the son of oh, yeah. Lim Kit Siang. Mm. You have Gobin Singh, son of Kapal Singh. Mm. And you also have Nuro, which is the daughter of Anwar. Mm -hmm. So I think basically maybe the father's background has some influence in terms of the career uh, a kid or a, a, a son chooses. And this is well documented in a lot of research. So, for instance, like my brother is a specialist, partly because when he was uh, growing up years, he was with my dad, dad when he was practicing mm -hmm. as a general practitioner. Mm -hmm. So I think the influence is there. Mm. Um, so politics is in Yeah, it, it, has some, it has some influence, of course, on our career choice and what we think, okay. and things like that. Great. Now, moving on to some more dirt. Yeah. <laughs> MCA has been playing up the past hooded issue. Mm. Uh, What's the message, yeah, I that MCA is driving here? I think the past hoodoo issue is not an issue that we are playing it up. We are disseminating and giving information mm -hmm. to the voters. Okay, we must understand that in 1999, even though it is not stated in any of the manifesto of the Barisan alternative during that period, which is DAP and PAS, and if I'm not mistaken, it wasn't PKR, they continue to implement in PAS, in Terengganu, the hoodoo. Mm. It, was it, was it was it was passed in the state assembly mm. and it was proposed by PAS. And in this recent general election, we can see very clearly that PAS have sent out very strong messages. Number one, they have said PAS Ganti Amno. Mm. You never hear DAP or you never hear PKR Ganti Amno. Mm. That's number one. Number two, they have also clearly stated that implementing PAS Hudud, it is not an option. It is an obligation. All right. And thirdly, which is more important, whether it's Hadi Awang, whether it's Mat Sabu, or whether it's Nick Aziz, they are very clear. They have already announced, in fact, that if this recent general election, if the results is good, they will propose for an, an amendment to 
look at implementing Hudud. Mm-hmm. So if you look at all the scenario, and if they say that they will govern, and if you look at most of the states, who will be the PM? That is a question. Because in Johor, the candidate for PMB is from PAS. From Kedah, the same. From Perak, the same. From Pahang, most likely. Kelantan, Terengganu. You have uh, even uh, Perlis. And you have also Seremban. So if most of the state seats are all coming from PAS mm-hmm. in terms of becoming the MB, naturally, it would be PAS that will be becoming the PM. And that's the reason why in the recent manifesto launching, it's very clear that they, Anwar, do not dare to commit mm-hmm. that he is going to be the PM. Mm-hmm. It's only DAP saying that, but PAS say, no, we have not decided. So it's very clear who is the boss. So this is the fact. It is a fact that we can see becoming more prevalent, mm-hmm. more clear. And if you look at what is being implemented in Kedah and Kelantan, it is what you call a beginning of what they hope to implement. I understand you're very good in numbers. How many seats to How MCA? Many seats? <laughs> <laughs> One minute before we wrap up. So Alan Chepumas, why we? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> How many seats? Uh, we are hopeful. Mm. Um, how many seats we hope to get mm. um, in 2004 the number of parliament and state seats that we have in total is 107 okay, okay. in 2008 yes, um, shrinked by half to 46 less mm. than half which is a big blow to MCA 2013 2013 I think it's the voters that can decide not me <laughs> 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 All right, thank you so much, YB. YB Dato Chua Tiyong, who is MP for Lavis, and also he has been here to answer a lot of thorny issues and also questions that is prevalent in GE13, the showdown. I'm Anne Edwards. Thank you so much for your time. We'll see you once again. Bye bye.